Welcome back everybody to Gentle Dorks and continuing on my bad superhero movies. Are they really that bad? We're going to jump right into it and talk about Blade 3 because it seems to be that the third movie of superhero movies before the MCU, if they managed to get three, isn't the most enjoyable. Now, controversial thought here, but I enjoyed playing Trinity. I always have. I've heard all the stories about all the behind the scenes things about Wesley Snipes and David S. Goyer not getting along and the fact that Wesley Snipes was stoned for the majority of the shooting of the movie, which is fine, you know. But a lot of people blame that on how bad the movie was. The reason Wesley Snipes was like that is because the script was completely rewritten before the casting was done. They'd given him the script and he said, this is great, I love it. They did a complete rewrite and then they started casting. And then he got the revised script a month before they started shooting. And it was a completely different story. They'd added in uh, Jessica Biel's character as Whistler's daughter. Uh, they'd added in Ryan Reynolds. Wesley Snipes read this and thought, they're trying to build a franchise around my franchise. I'm Blade. The franchise is Blade. And he thought that they were trying to make a spin-off that had Blade in it. That's how he perceived the script to be going. I can completely understand where he's coming from because compared to Blade 1 and 2, it was it was more comedic in tone. I can understand his weariness about the franchise and where it was heading. He phoned it in. He said, I'll do, I'll do the movie. I'm contracted to do the movie. I'll do it. But that's it. He said that as long as David S. Goyer was going to be involved in Blade, he would never be involved in Blade. And he wasn't. They did a Blade show. They came to him and said, we're doing a show. We're coming to you out of courtesy. And it's going to be recast. And he said, that's fine. He said, is David S. Goyer involved? And they said, yes. And he said, good luck. Goodbye. Now, the movie itself isn't a bad movie. The story with them bringing Dracula into the fold, having the original vampire going up against the Daywalker. Fantastic. I mean, the cast was amazing. You had Dominic Purcell coming in as Dracula, and it was fantastic. And then you've got Wesley Snipes as Blade, who was phoning it in for the majority of the time. You could see that he wasn't enjoying being in the movie, and you could tell. But he played the role as Blade. There's some scenes where he didn't do things that the director wanted, and they had to use a lot of CGI to fix things because he wouldn't do what David S. Goyer was asking him to do. But they couldn't fire him, and so that hindered the movie a lot. Now, I can understand the frustrations of Wesley Snipes and David S. Goyer. They're both trying to get this movie made. They both want to make money from it. But the disagreements just got the better of both of them. The whole thing about when Wesley Snipes was lying on the table, he refused to open his eyes. So we got some terrible CGI of some eyes opening. And it's, it's things like that silly wee things in the games that they were playing with each other that made people not enjoy the movie. Because when you're watching something, you can you can tell if there is behind the scenes things going on and you can completely tell that there was stuff happening in this movie that shouldn't have been happening. And there was stuff that should have happened that didn't happen. Now, the story is a group of vampires getting Dracula to kill Blade. But they need a team on both sides because they don't 
want Dracula to look weak. Why? I can understand why they've written in a team of vampire hunters for Blade to be on his side. But at the other end of the scale, that makes Blade look weak. And then, so it's, it was 50-50 about how it could have gone. At the end of the day, it wasn't a terrible movie. It was a very enjoyable movie. Is it the weakest in the franchise? Yes. Is the controversy surrounding it take you away from the movie? A bit. Because you can tell. Is it worth a watch? Definitely. It completes the story of Blade. So, give it a go. Go rewatch it. Let me know what you think. On a quick note about Blade, all this talk of the MCU's Blade, and there's so much more controversy surrounding this than Blade 3 could even dream about having. Directors coming and going, writers coming and going, scripts coming and going, cast members are down to two. We have an antagonist and a protagonist. Now, we have Blade cast who is going to be played by, I'm going to destroy his name, Marheshala Ali, who is a fantastic actor. And I cannot wait to see how he plays Blade and how they do the the movie eventually when it's going to come out, supposedly next year or possibly 2026. We'll need to wait and see. With San Diego Comic-Con coming up very soon, probably already been by the time this comes out but with that happening we should hear some word about when it's actually going to be coming out now we have him as blade and they have cast mia goth who is fantastic she has been in x peril and maxine a smattering of others but those are our three jump out performances and I can't wait to see her playing Lilith against Blade. Because the stories about Blade and Lilith in the comics, some of them are the best runs of Blade. And I can't wait to see what they do with that. So on that note, I love yous and leave yous. And as always, see ya. <laughs>